Come on and help us praise him this morning. you in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that, that God woke me up this morning and started me on my way. And I could say that 10 times because when I look around me and see the state of affairs for others, I'm thankful every morning when I can get up and I can be on my way. I'm, I'm thankful for the goodness of God and the graciousness of God in spite of who I am. 
uh, in the midst, if you will, of a three-year pandemic. Uh, Lord, you spared me, and I say thank you. In the midst of shortages of food, you fed me, and you you fed my family, and you fed my neighbors, and you fed people that I don't know about, Lord, and I say thank you. And in the midst of floods in the streets and rivers overflowing, uh, you've kept me afloat. And I say thank you for I could have been washed away in one of the rivers. I could have drowned out in the ocean. A river could have taken my home and everything else away. And so I say thank you, Lord, for all that you do in the midst of, of, of uh, mistreatment, if you will, of many and others. Uh, I, I, uh, by those who are sworn, if you will, to, to protect them, and yet they mistreat them. Uh, I say thank you, Lord, that uh, my child wasn't shot last night. And I'm thankful that the that the police of which I used to be one didn't pull me over and mistake me for a bandit or something and, and take my life lord and I'm I'm thankful that you've given me another day if you will and I'm 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 thankful that in the midst of violence in our streets and 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 troubles uh, all around the world that you have protected me lord and I I just say thank you I just can't say thank you enough for all the things that you've done and in the midst of actual war if you will, and rumors of wars, you spared our country, Lord, and you didn't have to do it, but many of the countries have found that they have gone by the wayside. And so I say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all that you have done to protect me. And, and even when I know I haven't deserved it, as a matter of fact, I can't think of a time uh, when I could say that I deserved anything. And so I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for, for uh, putting a hand on me, Lord, when I need someone to hold me down and, and guiding my footsteps and guiding my path and keeping me on the straight and narrow, even though I fall off or I walk off sometimes, bringing me back, Lord, for you didn't have to do it. And so this morning, I say, I say thank you uh, for all that you've done all that you've done. And therefore, I am, I'm, I'm just so glad, if you will, uh, to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so glad to be here one more time. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go uh, to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God, uh, the Lord our God, and I will seek your good good. Uh, they are planted, if you will, in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. Oh, Lord, I love the, uh, the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. But the Lord, is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord uh, a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His, his right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth bring forth break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Let us pray. 
Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for being our God. We bless you this morning because we realize, dear God, that you are the living God and you are Alpha and Omega and you're the beginning and the end of all things. And we bless your name this morning for just being with us and for us and watching over us last night and waking us up this morning. And we thank you, God, for just your spirit, dear God, allowing us one more time to meet together, oh God, to worship and to praise your holy name. We come this morning, God, just thanking you, dear Lord, for this life that we have, this opportunity, dear God, to come to meet, dear God, as saints of God, to praise you, dear God, to thank you and to make intercessions and supplications and to come with thanksgiving in our heart for everything, dear God, that you've done. We bless you this morning, dear God, for just keeping us because we know it was not for you, dear God, that we would not be here. We thank you, dear God, for every person on this line. We thank you, God, and we ask you, Lord, to bless the families that each one represents, God. We pray this morning for those, dear God, that are not able to sit up, those that are not able to get up, we pray that for them this morning, that they will receive the strength that they need. Oh God, this morning, we pray for those, dear God, that are in places of confinement, those in nursing homes and those in jails and prisons. We pray today, this morning, that they will be able to hear the word of truth. Oh God, that they will be blessed. Oh God, we pray this morning for the preacher. We pray for our pastor and first lady as they are on vacation. We pray, God, that you will bless them. Give them this week, another week to enjoy each other. Another week, dear God, to come in connections with your holy word and will. Oh, God, that they will come back ready, fired up to do your work that you have called them to do in Hemingway Memorial AME Church. Touch the preacher this morning, Reverend Rosalind Roberts, God. We ask you, Lord, to settle her down in your spirit and bring her up, dear God, from that well of knowledge, that well, dear God, of spiritual power, that she would be able to say a word, oh God, that will lead God and direct us, oh God, in a way, dear God, that your spirit will be so activated in us that we would earnestly seek you, God, to do your will. Give us an intimate encounter this morning, God. Save somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody in the name of Jesus. Anyone, dear God, that is seeking the presence of your Holy Spirit in a more fuller way, oh God, touch them this morning. Oh God, we ask you to touch hearts, those that are listening online, send people in, God, open ears that we might hear you, break down any stubbornness that we might have in our hearts and minds that the word would flow in us and through us, that we would continue to be your witness. Oh God, let all things go well this morning on this platform. And at 1030, God, bless the preacher there too. We ask you, God, in all that we do, help us, God, to serve you and love one another as you have asked us to. For people will know who we are by the love that we have one for another. God bless this service and let your kingdom, dear God, increase by what we do. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and say amen and amen. Yeah. 
heart understand. We all need somebody. Everybody say to that part. Hey, let's say it again. You just call on the father when you need a hand call. We all need somebody. To Your friends lead might not understand. On. Welcome you to our Sunday service. On behalf of our senior pastor, Rev. Dr. Gerald Falsam, and First Lady Joyce Falsam, we are so grateful you are here, whether in person or in our virtual sanctuary. We are good ground to sow a seed. Hemaway is always ready to serve and meet the needs of the community. From our coat drives, backpack giveaways, food for our seniors, prayer and gift cards at the grocery store, our angel tree to support children who have incarcerated parents, baby diaper drives, and so much more. To give, visit us on our website at hemingwaymemorialame.org forward slash give. This includes using the Givelify app, searching for Hemingway Memorial AME, or PayPal using the links provided. We also have Cash App, dollar sign Hemingway Memorial. You can send a check made payable to the church, mailing it to 6330 Gateway Boulevard, District Heights, Maryland, 20747. If you are in the area, please feel free to bring your donation to our drop box on the Blazer Drive side of the church. For those of you in the physical sanctuary, you can drop your offering in any one of the boxes along the walls. Something I've never seen. The Second Episcopal District has put out a call for each of us to join or renew our membership with the NAACP. As a member, you'll make a difference each and every day in this fight and become part of a vibrant community of people who stand for justice and equality. We need you to act now by going to NAACP.org forward slash membership. Please do this by October. The link is also available on our website. We will have a modified schedule of Bible studies for the month of August. Tuesday night blueprint for young adults and our Wednesday morning monocall will continue. All other Bible studies will resume in September. Remember, keep reading your Bible. There will be no rehearsals or recordings for the 7.30 a.m. singing groups for August. Keep those singing voices ready. We'll see you in September. We have truly been blessed by our preachers thus far for August. Give us some hand claps or comments whether you are joining us virtually or in person. Reminder, Pastor and First Lady will be back next Sunday. Have you visited our website, HemingwayMemorialAME.org to experience all that is happening in our ministry? There you will find service times and how to connect with us, upcoming events, new members orientation and the handbook and how to sign up for our mailing list. Visit our worship page to watch and engage with our services and noonday Bible study. Watch live and on demand any time of day or night.
We have several ways to give electronically or you can mail your donation should you choose that option. Visit our ministries page, check out what we have and how you can join or connect with one. Need to know if there's a meeting or an event happening? View the church calendar. We are excited about our membership portal where members can log on to their account, access all forms, including the financial voucher. Have you seen the press page? We've highlighted when Hemingway appears in the news with articles and video clips. Check out our virtual church page to access all Zoom links to services and Bible studies. Last, we have a way to contact us with any questions, concerns, prayer requests, and more.
Amen, amen, amen. Can we give God some praise up in the house? God is just that good. He's so worthy to be praised. Come on, y'all. Y'all can do better than that. I see a couple of hands praising, but if you just give God 30 seconds of praise this morning, if you give him the honor and worship him in spirit and in truth this morning, because that's the God we serve, he thought that we were worth saving. He thought that we were worth everything. Think about what he's done for us. That's the God that we serve. Hallelujah this morning. God, give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God this morning for the opportunity to come before you. But before I say anything, I just want to give the praise to the God, to that God who can do anything, that God who has I greet you in the master's name of Jesus Christ, the one who died for us, the one who rose again, the one who decided that we were worth saving. Amen, amen, and amen. Um, I, before I do anything, I want to give honor to our pastor and first lady and thank God, pastor, for the opportunity to come before you this morning. He didn't have to do that. And I thank you, my, thank you for my family and my friends and my church family. God knows that I love you all. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord, everybody, everybody. But there is a word today, amen. There is a word today. And if you let us, let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, we thank you so much for all that you've done and all that you're doing, God. And we just want to say thank you. Move, rise out the way, God, and you do what you do best. And that's bless, keep, deliver, and save in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture comes today from Numbers. Um, and it's actually chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. And I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible, the Message Bible. And it says, it is, reads as this. They set out from Mount Hor along the Red Sea Road, a detour from the land of Edom. The people became irritable and cross as they traveled. They spoke out against God and Moses. Why did you drag us out of Egypt to die in this God-forsaken country? No decent food, no water. We can't stomach this stuff any longer. So God sent poisonous snakes among the people. So they bit them and many of the Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we sinned and we spoke out against God and you. Pray to God, ask him to take these snakes from us. Moses prayed for the people. God said to Moses, make a snake, make a snake and put it on a flagpole. Whoever is bitten and looks at it will live. So Moses made a snake of fiery copper and put it on the top of a flagpole. Anyone bitten by the snake who then looked at the copper snake lived. And just for a slight moment this morning, I want to, the sermon topic, if you'll pray for me, bitten but blessed. Remix version, look up. There's a blessing with your name on it. Quite often, we find ourselves struggling from time to time. It appears that sometimes we take a few steps forward, we take, all of a sudden, we're taking three or four steps back. We don't know why this is, and we don't know why God is rerouting us in order, rerouting us at this time, and we begin to complain. He reroutes us to protect us at most times, and there's a different direction he is having for us, but yet we complain all the time, and then during this period, we may not understand why it's happening and what is going on, but we still complain. We began to question everything and everybody, including God. But if the truth be told, there are some people that just like to complain. But if you look at it from the point of view that God gets sick and tired, and he probably is sick and tired of us complaining, he's sick and tired of us not looking to him to do what is needed and just follow his directions. Folks, we have to stop and look at God and look up to him because all our blessings come to, from him in the first place. Let's look at the text. Here we have Moses who realizes that he cannot deliver the Israelites to the edge of the promised land by going straight up from the south after what happened in Arad and Edom. 
in Eric, they fought against the Israelites and the uh, Eric fought against the Israelites and they were able to capture some of them, even though it was utterly destroyed. So what Moses did was he, and he skirted around Edom because it appeared that they had a military advantage to the east. Unfortunately, this was a longer and rougher journey for the Israelites. And of course they did what they do best and that was complain. At this point, God had had enough of their complaining and he can't, he's, and, and, and the fact is that because he had enough, the same complaint, y'all know the story, for 40 years, they've been, in this, they've been in the wilderness. And why have you led us from Egypt to die in the wilderness? You know, that's what they said. He said, and, and if you think about it, God said, and I, I know I told them that I'm going to keep them. And by during this period, he kept them for during the pillar by night and, he, and a cloud by day, he led them to where they were supposed to go. He provided manna from heaven and he gave them meat to eat. He also provided the water that they needed, yet they still were not satisfied. They're mad because they had to travel a little bit more. Yes, it was a little bit arduous duty. Yes, they had to walk a little bit more, but during this whole period, they were still kept. And, and if I could pause there for a moment, you know, God has kept us all this time in our lives. Yes, we have gone through some stuff and yes, we are going through some things. Some of us are going through an illness. Some of us are in our own wilderness experience. Some of us are just having a hard time just for a little bit. Uh, but yet we are complaining, you know, why am I going through this? And how come I don't have the best car that I want? How come I don't have the house that I want? How come I don't have the clothes that I want? How come I don't have the food that I want? And it's the same thing with, the, with those in the wilderness. But the truth of the matter is God has supplied all of our needs. And it's time to stop complaining. But we have that big old but in the midst of everything. But God has, you given me everything, God, but I want more. God, you have done this for me, but I still want it. We don't appreciate what God has done. And that's what is happening here in the scripture. The Israelites didn't appreciate God's mercy or his grace. He, they, they have not, they still complained about dying and they were still alive. Yes, they, he, he delivered them out of Egypt. And if you think about it and pause there for a second, they were no longer slaves. God was providing them everything that they need. They didn't have to um, build bricks without hay, none of that, without any straw. They didn't have to go through any of that. But they, would, they kept complaining, they said, I'd rather be a slave than be guided by God. I, I, I don't understand that concept. And so then God said, you know what? I'm going to give them something to complain about. I, I'm, I'm going to put some, give them some snakes and let them bite them, some poisonous snakes. And many of them died. They started confessing their sins after they saw this and, and they went to Moses. Ah, Moses, we're sorry. Um, can you go to God on our behalf? We spoke against you and God. And, and can you go on our behalf? Can you pray to God? And you know, if you pause there for a minute, they didn't want to pray to God and they didn't feel like they could pray to God because they knew they were wrong. But, but Moses went on and he prayed to God and he interceded on their behalf and God told him, make a, make a, make a snake image and mount it on a pole so the people could see, so the people who had been bitten, if they look to the image in faith, and know that God would bring them out, they will be recovered. Can I stop there for a moment? At no point in this scripture did God say for them to honor a snake. Can I pause there for a moment that God never told us to look to anything but to him? The purpose of the snake was so that they would look up. The purpose of the snake was so that they, their eyes would look up to heaven, to God. And he's the one who would heal them. He's the one who would recover them. So don't put, your, don't put your faith in man because they will fail you every time. Don't put your faith in anything that because it has no power. God is the only one who could save you. God is the only one that could heal you. God is the only one who could set you free. Is there anybody here 
that needs to be saved? That, that is there anybody here that needs to be healed? Is there anybody here that needs to be set free? If it is, I dare you, I, I dare you to look up to God, to the one who can save anybody, the one who can heal anybody, the one who is bringing you out right now, the one I tell you from a point of view who is healing me right now. I just thank God that we have a God who can do anything. Also, I want to tell you about that snake thing. You know, in much later, Jesus compared the bronze snake to him being lifted on the cross as an antidote in the world to, to in comparing the world's sins and problems. If we have to look to the cross and ask God to the Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of us, we'll be all right. We'll be all right because the Holy Spirit says, I am your comforter. I am your keeper. I am the one. And, and God says, all you have to do is look up. But you see, sometimes our mouths get us in trouble, but our vision will set us free. The vision to look up to God, the vision to claim him as our own division, but you must stop complaining about what the problem, some of your problems and look to him and ask God for forgiveness. We ask that we can forgive him in spite of ourselves. We ask to have him forgive us because we are trouble in with our, we make trouble with our mouth. We have to for, ask God for forgiveness because you know, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But hallelujah today that the God that we have in our place, the God who saved us in the first place, the God who woke us up this morning, the God who is starting us on our way, the God who says all we have to do is look up to him, that God is still there. Hallelujah to him. And I, he will bring you out of any problem that you have. You see, the very thing that was meant to destroy you like these states can be the same very thing that will bring you out as long as you look up to God. That snake can't bring you out, but God can. Don't look, don't take your eyes off of him. Keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jesus Christ. He will sustain you and he will keep you no matter what if you're going through. This is the God that we serve. There is a blessing with your name on it. And I just stopped by to tell you that he is the lily of the valley and bright and morning star. He is I am that I am. He is everything that you need him to be. What do you need him to be this morning for you? What is it that you're standing in need of? I tell you, he will give you the job that you need. He will provide the food that you need, the clothing that you need, the roof over your head that you need. He is that God. He will heal you even in the midst of your storm, no matter what you're going through. All you have to do is ask him. And if you don't believe me, ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I tell you, as they were in the fiery furnace, and if they, had, if they can go through a fire that was seven times hotter than anything, but Jesus kept them. They came out not even smelling like smoke. I, I stopped by to tell somebody that if you are in a lion's den, I look at Daniel and he, he slept on the lions that night and he came out and not being bent, he was, he was all right. I'm telling you this morning that if you look at the woman with the issue of blood, hallelujah, she for 13 years, she, she struggled. But you know what? She kept her eyes on the prize. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, then I will be made whole. He did, she didn't worry about the people around you and she didn't worry about anybody around her, whether they looked at her or not. And Jesus said, who touched me? And she knew that something had come out. That's how you know. God knows if you just reach for the hem of his garment, he will make you whole. I just stopped by to tell somebody today that there's a God who can do anything. There's a God who can keep you. I just stopped by to tell you that there's a Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That sat on the cross, late, that was pit, that nailed on the cross for you and for me. He, he didn't have to do it, but he decided to die. And because he decided to die, hallelujah, we're still here. We have, we have the right to the tree of life if we just believe, if we just look up, if we give our lives over to Christ. How many of you today, how many of you today just want to look to the Lord? How many of you today, if you just give him praise, give him honor, 
and trust the one who can do anything but fail, I promise you today that all he has, all you have to do is honor him and give him praise. All you have to do is trust and believe in him. I say, look up and to the hills of which cometh your help. All your help will come from the Lord. Look up and trust in him. Don't look at anybody. Stop complaining about what you're going through. The complaint means nothing because you got a God who could do anything. How many of you know today that there's a God who saves, a God who delivers, a God who keeps? Trust the Lord in all ways. And I promise you today that he will bring you out. He will hold you in the midst of your arms. He will give you everything that you stand in need of. And all you have to do is say thank you at the end of this. Don't accept the credit because all the glory belongs to God. Don't accept anything from anybody because everything belongs to him. But you got to trust him. You got to love him and have your faith in God. Then it comes because I'm telling you now, you're bitten just a little bit, but you're blessed. You're bitten because there are some things that we have done that God is saying, I just want you to know that I still got you. He has you in the midst of his arms. He has, the, he has you holding you right now. We're bitten sometimes, but we're blessed. And if you give God the praise, if you give him the honor, and if you trust in the one who can do anything, then everything will be all right. There are some people out here on the line who's been bitten and don't realize you're blessed. You can be blessed if you know Jesus Christ. The one, all you have to do is call on his name. And if that's you, put it in the chat and say, thank you, God, I, I need you today. And if you put in the chat, it's me, Somebody, one of our preachers will reach out to you and pray for you. But if you pray right now and if everybody will repeat after me that today, God, I give you my heart and my mind. I know that Jesus Christ died for me. God, I give you all of me. I open my heart and my mind to you. You will be saved. Save, God saves, keeps, and delivers. If you know that you need prayer, put it in the chat. And one of our preachers will pray for you. You're going, somebody's going through some something. The Spirit tells me that somebody is struggling right now. And God says, he's got you right now. He's holding you right now. But you need to come to him. Trust him. He's going to bring you out of this, but trust him. There's some folks on here that need healing. God is a healer. He said he is Jehovah Rapha. He's the healer. By his stripes, you are healed. So we're claiming healing in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here. And if you want what we have, this, this, this encounter with God, I'm telling you, welcome the Holy Spirit in your life. He will reign in your life and he will guide you and he is your comforter. That's who we look up to. I tell you that there's nothing like it. All you have to do is reach out, look up, thank him and welcome him in. He's knocking at your door. But if there's anybody who says, you know what? I, I need to renew my relationship with him. This is the time, say it's me, say it's me. And someone will reach out to you. And let's give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. I'm turning it over, but I give you, I thank you so much for joining us. But don't forget, bitten but blessed. Look up to God because he has everything for you. Man, what a beautiful word. Uh, look up and see the mighty hand of God. Because being bitten does not mean you're not blessed. And we will read the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
The third day he arose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Father God, we come right now just thanking you for a wonderful word, Father God. We ask right now that you switch that deep down into our spirits, Father God, that we might be able to understand that we are blessed, even though we might have been bitten. Father God, we remind us to look up and look to the hill from which cometh our help. Father God, because you are our help. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We ask right now that you just keep in touch each and every one of us. Father God, control our minds and our hearts and our spirits that we might seek you more and more each and every day. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning. We thank you for all that has transpired. Father, we love you. We adore you. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both for now and forever. And let the church say, Amen.